Oh, good afternoon. I wanted to talk about some of the things that can happen to your tropical fruit trees uh, during winter time. And uh, this can happen any time, but it, it is most prevalent during the winter time. So, and that would be um, underwatering and also worse, overwatering. So, I've got two examples here. I thought I took the opportunity to show you what it looks like. So this is a trampo canistel. This is a, a classic sign of the tree being overwatered. Uh, I mean, this is entirely my fault. Uh, in fact, this is actually the second time that um, I overwatered a, a canistel tree. Um, but uh, you know, these guys are surprisingly hardy when it comes to bouncing back. So what had happened was, um, you know, in preparation for a freeze the night before. I went ahead and, and, and thoroughly watered the container. Uh, I mean, the container is, the soil that I've put in there is actually really good draining. Uh, but you got to keep in mind though, winter time, due to the lack of um, evaporation that uh, is happening on the leaves, they don't need a whole lot of water. So this is the classic sign of being over water is the leaves are still on the tree. They're just very droopy like this. I mean, this is, it's eventually going to just, uh, the, the branches eventually will die back. Um, but what happens is when you overwater a tree, uh, especially a tropical tree, the roots basically starve uh, of, you're starving the roots of oxygen. And I mean, like you and I, you know, I mean, what happens when we don't get oxygen? So the tree slowly starves. But, um, you know, when it comes to overwatering, first thing you want to do, of course, is don't water anymore. And in my case, um, I, I did move the, the mulch away from the, the, the trunk of the tree just to give it some breathing room. But sadly, there's really not a whole lot you can do when it comes to um, a tree that has been overwatered, uh, basically drowned. Um, you're just going to have to, you know, cross, cross your finger and, and hopefully it bounces back. But um, I did have actually one over here, uh, another trample canistel that <laughs> last year I also overwatered. But uh, I mean, it, it made a great comeback. Uh, this guy is, this is all, uh, see, the, see the leaves? I mean, this is, the leaves are all crinkling like this. Th this is frost damage. Whereas the, the ones that I showed you earlier, when the leaves were kind of curling up like that, that's just uh, overwatering, but anyhow, yeah. I mean, this is another trample canister that um, I overwatered in preparation for a frost uh, the morning of, and but it eventually, you know, made a nice comeback. So I have high level of confidence that the canister will bounce back. But <clears throat> on the so on the extreme side of things. I, uh, I made a discovery the other week when I uh, went into my greenhouse, which is the heated greenhouse. So this is an, an Araza. I mean, look at the pattern, right? It's very similar. But this particular tree was underwater. Um, so the, one of the methods that you can tell if it's underwatered I mean, obviously the container's dry. I mean, the at the nursery when they when they continuize this plant, I mean, the soil that they put in there was just very well draining. I mean, the sucking I put water on top, it, it goes straight down to the bottom. So that tells me that the um, drainage requirement on this guy is going to be pretty extreme. So, but going back to underwatering. If you look at some of the growth, I mean, it's not affected at all. I mean, upon seeing the, the soil was dry, and this, this guy was pretty sad looking when I first got it, when I first saw it. Um, first thing I did, of course, was give it plenty of water, and I've been watering it consistently. Um, you know, Araza, just uh, being that it, it came from, it originated from the Amazon rainforest. I mean, it's a rainforest for a reason, so it rains there, you know, practically every day. So this guy needs a lot of water. So this tells me when I need to 
uh, upsize the container on this one. I need to um, <laughs> give it a, a lot of um, peat moss to hold on to the water and maybe some perlite. But um, yeah, this guy is, um, you know, underwater. I mean, what what underwater trees, um, you know, admittedly, I have yet to kill a tree that has been underwater. Underwater trees, they're a bit more forgiving. I mean, all you do is just give them some water and they almost always come right back up. Over water trees, good luck. But knowing the chem style and form experience, it, it very likely will bounce back. Um, there's a couple of other issues too that I wanted to show you and so they are in the front. Another common issue that we have typically during the rating season, which usually is in the uh, winter and springtime is tropical trees that have very shallow root systems, uh, such as papaya. So this is what happens. I mean, we don't water this at all during the winter time, but this is what happens when it gets a bit too much water. The roots basically just kind of melt off. And you know, when, when I planted this in the ground, I mean, I, I intentionally planted it above grade. I mean, if you look at the retainer wall here, it is just nothing but mulch, just wood chip, about maybe six, uh, eight inches worth of wood chip. So I intentionally planted it above grade, so that way there's plenty of um, drainage. But, um, you know, it happens. That, that's why, you know, you've got multiple trees here. Um, but, um, you know, in addition to papayas, uh, dragon fruit's also another one that has a tendency to root rot. That's why a lot of folks put uh, dragon fruits in containers just so that way they can control the uh, liquid level. The um, yeah, and one other thing that can happen to anyone, and it really is just bad luck, but um, is you know when when you go and to a nursery and pick up a nice tree. So this is a, a purple um, kaimito, also known as a star fruit. I'm sorry, not star fruit, star apple. But uh, we've got both of these. Both of these uh, were purchased from a nursery in Los Angeles back in December or so. They weren't, to be fair, they weren't in the best shape to begin with. But, you know, the selection was very limited. I mean, these were a bit hard to find. So this is a, um, a green kaimito, green star apple. This is a purple star apple. Uh, not a whole lot of differences between the two. It's just the exterior colors. One's green, one's purple. Uh, otherwise, when you cut it open, the taste is the same. But um, this one, I mean, I, I treated both of these, you know, with the greatest care. I mean, both of these were in the heated greenhouse. Uh, I mean, relatively protected from the elements. But this one slowly just went downhill and uh, I mean, I scratched it. Oh, it, it's still green, but it's, I mean, this is what you get. I mean, it's just bad luck. So w once the weather warms up, I, I'm hopeful that it comes back up. But uh, if not, then hey, I've got a backup here. So this one right here, if you look at it, I mean, it, it's doing great. I mean, you know, you've got a bunch of new growth, uh, you know, coming out. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, you just have bad luck. But anyhow, yeah, I just uh, wanted to show you some of the challenges of, um, you know, just growing just trees in general. All right, have a good afternoon.